The first step for this project is that we are going to cut our 20 sheets of A4 paper, which will give us 40 sheets of A5 paper. Part of my motivation with this project is to ensure that we don't need all sorts of expensive equipment, um, which means that I'm also going to skip the step of trimming the book edges. That's not always essential, but often, especially with case-bound books, the, the edges are trimmed, but that means that one needs either a big gelatine or a plow, which can be expensive. There are ways around that, but for the sake of this project, we're going to skip that step. But because of that, we need to make sure that the our sheets of paper are exactly the right size and that we fold them very, very carefully. So I'm actually going to cut each page individually. If you have a paper cutter that can make sure that everything's exactly the same then by all means use that um, but because we don't necessarily have that I'm going to just very carefully fold each page separately you can use your bone folder for that although I find that my nails do and then I use in order to cut paper like this I find a Stanley knife with the blade out is very helpful that having folded the paper very precisely I then run the blade through the middle, Oops. make sure the blade's um, sharp, and that will give us two sheets. And because I'm trying to be so precise with this book, I'm going to do each sheet individually. They're not that many. And I now have 40 sheets of A5 paper that are in the short grain and I'm going to fold each of these so that I will have a six folded sheets. As I said, I'm doing them individually to be as precise as I can. And these sheets are going to be arranged in what we call signatures or little booklets that are sewn together. So there will be four sheets in each signature giving us a total of 10 signatures each. If I were trimming the edges of the book I would probably uh, fold more sheets at a time and not be so worried about being precise. But for this project, I'm going to do them individually. And they have, have their one signature. I now have all my sheets folded and arranged into signatures which means I have a total of 10 signatures, each of which will contain 16 pages or four of the original sheets. Now, before I proceed to the next step, I would normally put this between two planks and into the press, but for the purposes of this series, I'm going to press them between boards and move G clamps. So make sure that they are exactly on top of each other. What you can actually do is split them up and put them so that half of the signatures face the one way and the other half the other way. We basically just want to get them as flat as possible before we start stitching. And then You 
can use bigger clamps and for a book, bigger, bigger book I would suggest using four, four clamps. Also if you're using boards like this try and make sure that they are flat. Eventually your boards might have little knobs or bits of glue or something hard on them um, which will show on your paper so if that is the case rather put some board against the edge of the board I mean bookbinders board um, but there we have our paper which is going to press I'd leave it for a few hours or so um, it's not the most crucial step but it is a good idea to do this I've now pressed my book block consisting of 10 signatures and the next step is going to be to punch holes in each of the signatures. To do this, there, there are various ways of doing this. Um, some that use a little jig that is probably easier than this. But because we are doing this with minimal equipment, I'm simply going to use a piece of paper, slightly thicker paper, which I will make a template out of that will show me where to punch my holes. The paper is the same length as the text block. Now what I'm going to be doing, there, there are also various ways of um, stitching book blocks. And I'm not saying that this is any better than any others, but what I'm going to be doing here is stitching it on bands. I'm only going to make the bands out of paper for this exercise. Um, but I find that to be a quite helpful way of um, stitching a text block. That means that I'm going to have one band in the middle, well roughly in the middle. So I will need two holes, one on either side of it. And then I'm also going to need a hole at the top and one near the bottom. So this is 15 centimeters long. I'm going to put one two centimeters away from the top. That's the top. Usually the one at the bottom is slightly further from the edge. So I'm going to put it, say, just under three away from there. Um, and then I'm going to divide the, the middle section up. That is, let me count properly, that's just over 10 centimeters. So we'll find the middle point and then perhaps say a centimeter on either side of that. So those are going to be our four holes. And then we'll open it up. And with my awl, I'm going to just carefully punch a hole at each spot. As I say, this isn't necessarily the best way of doing it in the long term, but it's a simple and a method that requires doesn't require too much equipment. So I now have my little template, and what I do is I take a signature, open it up, or at least find the center point, try and make sure that it's um, that the top and the bottom are precise, that all the sheets are together. And then I place my template in the middle, push it back, because I really, I want to get the hole as much in the middle as I can. So I'm going to then Push my all through the hole in my template, but carefully, I'm not going too far. And then again the second one, and the third, and the fourth. And if it's good, I will be I will have the hole precisely in the middle. If you find yourself going off so that it comes out much more to the one side or the other side. Um, then you probably need to practice a little more. So that's my one signature. And then I basically just repeat the process. I find that it helps me to get it in the middle if I, having put it, placed it 
down then put this down a bit so that I'm pushing the ore straight through. Okay, there's the second. Um, and then I repeat the process 